Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, I wanna give you an update on the inspection this morning and it went off incredibly well. And, and here's one of the things that was really important and also uh, help expedite things. Out of the inspection crew, we had uh, Officer Romero, who is uh, part of Oakland Police Department Cannabis Enforcement Department. And so he was on site. We had a uh, fire marshal from the city of Oakland, a fire inspector for city of Oakland. We had uh, a city building inspector. And then uh, the one person who I didn't know, because this is a fairly new department, was... Uh, special activity inspector which is part of uh, the economic and workforce development uh, part of oakland uh, part of the permitting process and this is his card right here and that was the only person that i didn't know but he was comforted to to see that everybody else knew who i was and that they have a very positive uh, experience with me uh, some of the folks I worked with uh, in the building department way back when I was a, a general contractor and, and had my federal general contractor's license and working, doing work for, the, for our government. And then uh, <clears throat> I knew, I knew uh, Officer Romero from the uh, cannabis uh, uh, enforcement because I've worked with him since uh, 2019 right here on the on uh, clearing the area of illegal grow houses and uh, to make reports about what was going on in the area. Uh, and he was trying to conduct inspections on a lot of uh, the uh, illegal grow houses. And, and one of the things right now uh, that people are saying, well, you know, why don't they come back up? Well, because here's what Oakland is doing. Oakland is literally cutting power to all of them. Any of them that are in question, that are now uh, in question, that are Ill illegal grows, uh, they just cut the power. They just have PG&E cut the power off and it's up to them to prove that they are not a grow operation. And if they go to uh, uh, a generator, I found this out this morning, it's a $75,000 a day penalty, $75,000 per day. Yeah, that that uh, should discourage uh, uh, some growers because that, that's a lot of money. Uh, but, and then to have it on a daily basis too, that that is pretty significant. But uh, everything went um, really well and, and uh, once they knew that they were uh, had a dealing with a person who is known to them, it put them at ease because here, when I first uh, went out to meet them this morning, everybody was come out and said, well, what are you doing here? I said, I'm representing the uh, work group here. I'm, I'm uh, their advisor. And, and so that's the, the role that I have right now as uh, the advisor so that we can get things expedited and, and moving along here in the city. And you're probably wondering, well, why why do you have this inspection going and, and why are there so many people in your business? Why can't, well, here's the thing. We're trying to set up a, a, an operation uh, that uh, is in a former uh, cannabis uh, grow area. Uh, not just the, the building, we're talking the area because there is a significant, there were a significant number of illegal grow operations right here in East Oakland. And we've been able to shut down uh, a majority of them there. And the only ones that are currently running right now um, are the licensed uh, grow operations uh, here in certain parts of Oakland. And so we've been working real hard and very diligently at removing this hazard and this uh, danger from the city of Oakland. Uh, 
Uh, I've worked with uh, uh, Alameda County Deputy Sheriff's Office, uh, California uh, uh, State Marshal's Office. Uh, so I've worked with a lot of agencies, DEA uh, in San Francisco. Uh, and so there's, there's a lot of organizations and operations that I, I've worked with uh, here locally to uh, curb the crime and, and criminal activity. Uh, and I do so like no other uh, politician or any uh, activist uh, has done because I know a lot of them and I know uh, who they are. Uh, I know what their temperament is. Uh, and, and so I'm able to deal with a lot of them face to face and those that are really dangerous and, and uh, uh, there's nothing that can be done about them, you know, then you know, we're just going to have to let uh, time and take its, uh, its route on them. Uh, but it, we are now um, been cleared so that we can pull our, our starting permits and then we can uh, put in place the filtering systems. We can also start building uh, the grow out ponds. Uh, also, we we begin work in the nursery so that uh, we have the grow out ponds there and, and also the uh, the infancy trays uh, that are, you saw the, all the racks that's for the infancy trays there and so that room is real important and then the, the next room next door that's the, the first grow out room and then we plan on having two uh, grow out ponds in there and the depth on those grow out ponds is three feet in depth. So they're, they're very, very deep and they're going to fill a, a great portion of, of the room. And then the filtering system will be in uh, that, that dark room that you saw me walk through uh, in the previous video. Uh, that's where all the filtering electronics and all the monitoring equipment will be located. And, and so uh, we don't have to disturb uh, the grow out ponds. We don't have to disturb the nursery uh, when uh, we're checking things. We can uh, look at everything, all the conditions, all the levels, make sure that they're acceptable uh, for, uh, and also the oxygen levels. We're going to have oxygen sensors in there because oxygen is very important uh, to uh, the living uh, livestock there. But uh, we're, we're going to be pulling the permit, and then we're, once we get the filtering uh, system put in place, then we can uh, uh, apply for the uh, uh, water treatment plant, uh, uh, filtering plant uh, uh, license and operation, uh, and then that allows us to set up and, and actually uh, run the ponds uh, legally uh, here. Uh, and so once once all of those ponds are established, uh, they'll, they'll be coming back to check and, and look at how everything is, is running and operating, uh, and then how we are recording that data uh, for the water treatment. Uh, but, and you wonder why so many businesses are leaving California. It's stupid expenses like this. You know, they have no business telling us uh, and, uh, getting into the water uh, portion of uh, our business, of aquaculture, because we're recycling it. It's not like we're using uh, fresh new water all the time. We are recycling uh, through uh, a lot of different type of filtering cycles uh, for modern, modern day um, uh, aquaculture. And, and bees like that can, can Put a big detriment, a big stop on that. That's why you know, the cannabis industry has struggled so much because the stupid politicians got greedy. Uh, they started demanding uh, high taxes uh, right from the get-go rather than phasing it in, which is what they should have done over time to get up to where they are now. Um, they, they should have a, taken a 10-year period to go from zero to... Uh, nearly 50% tax right now here in the state of California, which is ridiculous for uh, 
cannabis. And, and then they wonder why it's so many uh, uh, black market cannabis uh, dealers are, are doing well and flourishing uh, is because if you go into a dispensary, an eighth, eighth of an ounce, we're talking three and a half grams, 55 to $60 for an eighth. So that's a lot of money for uh, essentially two joints. And um, they just, the taxes are, are crazy. And uh, it was pretty bad when, when they first started and it's just gotten worse. And it's driving a lot of uh, cannabis growers, cannabis dispensaries out of business because these stupid politicians have no idea what they're doing because they've never run a business. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.